Our topic this afternoon is integrated development. We are joined by two distinguished professionals with unique backgrounds that both believe that learning and talent management are most effective when offered as an integrated platform. First, I'd like to introduce you to Kevin Sessions, president of TalentQuest, who will serve as our talent management expert today. Kevin, welcome, and can you tell us a little bit about TalentQuest? Absolutely. Uh, first of all, thank you, Dallas, and thank you to um, everyone that's on the phone for today's webinar. Um, Matt and I, are, I know, are looking forward to uh, the discussion today and hope it, it proves beneficial to everybody on the phone. Um, yeah, let me tell you a little bit about TalentQuest. We are headquartered in Atlanta, Georgia, um, and really specialize in providing talent management software and services really to, to any company um, in any industry. Uh, we've got uh, over 300 clients around the world, and, and one of the things that we're real proud of is uh, really not only providing great products uh, that are easy to use and flexible and configurable, um, but at the same time providing ex exceptional and, and really excellent service and support, and um, that 98% retention rate is something we're real proud of. Um, you can see uh, some of the select clients we have, but again, just a representation of the ability to provide uh, services and software to really any, any company within any industry. Okay, thanks, Kevin. Um, next, we have Matt Gilley, co-founder of Intellum, who will be serving as our learning management expert this afternoon. Welcome, yeah. Matt. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> uh, also headquartered in Atlanta. Um, as you can see, Kevin has a, a professional picture uh, making him look like an industry titan. Uh, I think mine was taken uh, shortly after playing basketball. I don't know what that, that's a terrible <laughs> picture. Uh, but we happen to be in Atlanta as well. Um, and I think the, uh, aside from just our core values being the same, uh, what we share with Talent Quest is uh, a very high retention rate. And we'll get into that a little bit more as we go along. Um, Two things, two main things we provide uh, is the learning management system, which is called Exceed, and the second tool, which we're really excited about, is our social tool, which is called Tribe Social. And again, we'll get into those a little bit more uh, in a little bit more detail. But uh, you know, overall, we've been doing this for uh, going on uh, 13 years now, uh, and we do have uh, clients in uh, I think 111 countries now. So. It's neat. It started as uh, kind of the, the you know, in your back office uh, garage, typical romantic dot com startup, and uh, you know now I feel like we've we've grown a bit and uh, have a little a uh, little better spread in terms of uh, the uh, the client base. So interested to to hear what you guys think. Hey, I do these a lot. There's a there's a um, a chat room and a questions area. Dallas is going to be monitoring the questions area. Um, so as we go along, if you guys have a question, please throw it in there, and Dallas will lob it our way um, as we have breaks. So that's it for me. Okay. Thank you, Matt. And um, we are going to start. Let's start with the definition of talent management. Kevin, I know there are several um, different definitions of talent management out there. How do you and Talent Quest defined talent management? Yeah, so this is a, we've heard that term talent management thrown around a lot, and I'm sure everybody on this phone has, and, and everybody has a slightly different um, definition of what that means, so I think that's helpful, Dallas. And so let me tell you kind of from our perspective um, how we define talent management, and we really look at that talent management life cycle that really spans from selection to management to development and retention. So let's talk a little bit about um, what goes on in each of those phases. So in that first phase of selection and onboarding, um, we're talking about activities here, such as what you do to attract top talent. And then once you've attracted them, how do you source that talent? Um, and um, how do you assess their fit for the position and for the culture um, of your organization? And lastly, how do you onboard those people uh, into your organization to make sure that uh, they get up and running as quickly as possible. When we move to the next phase of, of the life cycle, um, we're talking about uh, how you manage people. And, and really this is getting at, at things such as how do you set their goals um, and expectations of, uh, for the employee and, and really how do you align those to the corporate 
uh, goals and objectives? Uh, and then how do you measure their performance on an ongoing basis? Uh, and ultimately, uh, how do you reward them through whether that's through compensation or, or other types of incentives? The, uh, the next phase of the talent management life cycle, again, from our perspective, is, is really when you get into development and the development of those employees. Um, and lots of different ways to do this, um, you know, really leveraging um, tools, some of which we'll see today, about how you identify gaps that uh, may exist um, for that employee. And it's real important when you, when you do this and in that phase of not only looking um, at areas they can improve upon, but really developing their strengths as well. Um, but going from that gap analysis, um, being able to identify areas to develop and creating a learning plan, um, and how do you coach and train those employees and groups of people on an ongoing basis and, and really measuring their progress uh, uh, on that development plan. And then lastly is, is the retention phase. And here we're talking about um, you know, activities you know, around reinforcing your company culture, um, how you measure their engagement within the workforce to make sure your employees are engaged, um, promoting from within uh, where, where you can and as often as you can, and then your ongoing succession and kind of workforce planning activities. And, and really, I think at the heart of this, uh, if any good talent management um, life cycle and process is a solid competency um, framework for an organization to really define the skills and behaviors that are necessary for success and get leveraged throughout these different uh, phases and activities within each phase. So um, I hope that's helpful. And, and again, Dallas, from um, I know there's lots of uh, little nuances in how people define this, but from our perspective, uh, that's really how we look at uh, talent management and the talent management life cycle. Okay, thank you. And Matt, can you explain um, what an LMS or learning management system is? Yeah, I mean, I think um, primarily, uh, well, it has evolved. I'll, I'll say that it's evolved. Uh, originally, the learning management system uh, came to market as a way to track uh, compliance training you know, OSHA, EEOC type training. It evolved uh, over the years to track instructor-led training. Uh, and then the next iteration was the ability to house and track um, online synchronous training, things like WebEx and GoToMeeting and that sort of thing. Um, so uh, today what we're looking at is an application that really is a conduit for delivering messages. Now some of those could be tracked you know, via SCORM or, or uh, some proprietary tools that we have. Uh, but others might be more social learning, uh, where we're not so concerned about the trackability, uh, but more uh, the ability for uh, all students to view this as a resource, as a community. Um, so what we're looking at today is an all-inclusive area to learn. Again, some of that is reportable learning, uh, but some of it isn't. Some of it's just, hey, how to keep your Christmas tree from burning down. You know, those sort of things. Important it, things. Yeah, important things. <laughs> it doesn't always have to be about corporate learning. Uh, so um, the LMS really has evolved, and, and we've tried to, as best we can, um, you know, kind of meet the needs of clients in that evolution. And, and Matt, maybe expand upon that a little bit um, when you talk about learning within an organization and um, you know you talked about the how the, the LMS has evolved and you mentioned at the beginning the um, social collaboration tool that um, has been developed tribe maybe talk about the role that that tribe has in social tools have, have now um, how they've interact with learning and, and can be complementary to a more traditional learning management system yeah I mean well there's, I guess, a couple ways to answer that. Um, one is the way a consultant would answer that, would answer that <laughs> right? And uh, they had these grandiose ideas. Um, and uh, in practice, uh, uh, in theory, they sound great. In practice, uh, not always something uh, that we're able to do. I actually have a client on here on the webinar today, uh, AO Wireless, um, who kind of flipped the learning on its side. Uh, and instead of starting with uh, the learning management system, uh, they decided to start with Tribe Social uh, and really replace email uh, with the use of Tribe. Um, so when we talk, you know, social or collaborative uh, learning, I think what we're what we're really talking about is meeting the learner on their own terms. Mm -hmm. And what we find, as opposed to sort of pigeonholing everything into um, 
uh, you know, this, this SCORM online PowerPoint world, now we're saying, well, wait a minute, you know, the millennials, the folks who are getting out uh, and who are the younger generation, they hate email. They yeah. text, mm -hmm. they tweet, right? So if, we are, if we're trying to attract really good talent, um, we want that talent to embrace the way that we're trying to deliver the message. And that's why we're giving them multiple media to access the knowledge. Yeah, makes perfect sense. So when we're um, talking about integrated development, um, if we go back to that talent um, management continuum, Kevin, that you showed us, uh, where does, Matt, where would learning fit into this? Where does learning go in talent management? You know, I'll tell you, I'm not, I'm not an absolute person, so I don't, I don't say it has to go here. Um, in my mind, we would find a, you know, one, when we onboard someone, we may find that they lack a certain skill uh, based on the job that they're doing. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the beginning of the process. Um, secondly, we might, as an employee, want to progress through uh, the company. We might want to become a supervisor or manager or whatever it may be. Learning may fit to say, well, if you'd like to do that, then let's assign these courses to you, right? Um, and then, of course, you know, the probably low-hanging fruit is we're at the end of the year or we're at uh, the time of the year when we do evals and we say, you know, Kevin Dallas, uh, as your manager, I'm recognizing that you're a little lax in these areas and therefore we can assign training to help you be a better employee. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I think, I think it makes perfect sense. And I, th I think this, this graphic that um, you're seeing right now is, is hopefully a good depiction of that. And that, um, to Matt's point, learning, um, you know, when, when integrated properly into the talent management uh, life cycle, um, it hits at multiple phases. And um, what this is depicting is, is kind of from a systems perspective, and this is how we see that within um, our talent management software, is that at the center of kind of everything is the employee themselves, but, and each employee has a real rich um, employee profile that, that really touches on everything about their, their work history, both internal and external. Um, their education, their job skills, their language skills, their career interests, um, their location preferences. So all data that can then be helpful um, when combined with job profiles and, and understanding what competencies uh, are required for a particular job or certifications or training or levels of experience. When you combine those two together, you can really understand um, what are some of those gaps. So as you look at that gap analysis, you're looking at not only their profile or what you're expecting out of the job, but then you're also looking um, and getting feedback from their manager or those that work around them, um, you know, whether that's through 360s or um, a more traditional performance management process or um, other activities, but you're really identifying um, what, are, what is the individual doing well and what are some things that they need to do uh, more effectively either in their current job or helping them to see if I want to get to the next level, um, what is it I need to do? And, and then, you know, the LMS can then automatically um, recommend the, the targeted training that addresses either that uh, job profile or those competency gaps and, and again they can be added to a development plan. Um, and again the nice piece about the integration is all of this is happening seamlessly back and forth uh, between uh, the different modules of the software and ultimately um, it all becomes viewable again back in that employee profile so um, it's a real nice interactive um, process. So it seems like talent management is there to identify um, either problems or opportunities, and then the LMS has the material to address these. And um, so it seems to me like talent management needs learning management and vice versa. So since the two are so interconnected, um, Matt, I'm curious, why didn't Intellum just create its own talent management platform? <laughs> It's a question that we asked ourselves for years, uh, to be frank. Um, the, the, originally, the thought was the talent piece and the learning management system piece uh, didn't seem to fit together, at least in, in our world. Um, secondly, there were talent management companies out there that, that we worked with um, who were sort of legacy vendors, and then we, we became a client uh, or a, a uh, a vendor of theirs and they said hey we have another vendor this vendor talks to that vendor right so it was just a simple integration CSV file and it wasn't a big deal 
Uh, fast forward to 2011, 2012, and we have a ton of consolidation in our industry where talent and learning now are, are combining forces um, in a big buy-up. Uh, most, if not all, of those companies uh, were funded and needed an exit event, right? There needed to be uh, a return on the investment that was made, you know, in 2000 or 2005 or whatever it may be. We were not uh, funded. So, one, we do not have to look for an exit event and therefore can be cautious in what we do. What we found uh, in the market was that the companies that were doing the buying and the quote unquote integrations were really cobbling together two totally separate databases, two totally separate uh, programming languages, two totally separate um, support mechanisms, but calling it the same solution, right? And that to us was just not at all the approach to take. Um, could we have developed it? Absolutely. Uh, however, and as you see here, um, you know, our motto is do what you do best and integrate with the rest. So by happenstance or serendipity or whatever we want to say, we happened to find a company about two miles from our office in Atlanta, Georgia, that had been doing the same thing and shared the exact same uh, philosophy as we. Um, and, uh, you know, that's how the, the relationship really began with, with you and us. Um, it was, uh, it, it really was, was awesome. I mean, I think we found each other through um, a combined client, mm -hmm. uh, and we do share other clients. But the short of it is, instead of merging uh, with another company uh, or buying a piece of technology or building it ourselves, we decided to go and find um, a really good partner. Yeah, and I think, you know, just to, to add on to that, Matt, it's, it's you know, when we were doing the same thing, trying to figure out, um, knowing that learning is an important part of the overall picture and um, us wanting to add that into the, into our product suite, um, you know, we were, we were looking for a couple of things that, that we know are so critical and we're committed to for our clients is, is finding, you know, a, a solution, first of all, that is, um, that is easy to use, um, that's, that's very functional, um, that's very flexible. Um, and, and that's critical because that's things we focus on so much on our own uh, solutions. But also um, above and beyond that is um, where there is really just outstanding service and support around it. And, yeah. and, and I'm sure everybody on the phone um, has dealt with this at some point. But um, as an industry, the, the talent management space has really not uh, done a good job of servicing clients. Um, and it's something that, that we have focused incredibly hard on because it's, it's more than just finding and, and buying and implementing a piece of software. Um, it's really about how do you service and support it going forward. And, and unfortunately, um, clients uh, and, and companies out there have been on the wrong end of the stick sometimes yeah. because the, their providers have been trying to grow too fast and, and lose sight of, of providing that outstanding service and support. Um, and are instead of worrying about um, where's the next client going to come from. So and I, I totally agree with you. Um, and I think, you know, and this is something that I've said on other webinars, but it, it still continues to happen and, and totally perplex me. And that is, if you look at the, the buying public in their personal lives and how they vet software and, you know, the ways that they say, uh, yeah, I like it and I want it. It's, it's so different than the way the enterprise justifies a purchase, right? Mm -hmm. The enterprise justifies a purchase by bells and whistles and marketing slicks and attractive salespeople and, and, and you know, the full gamut, right? If we're looking in our personal life, we don't care about any of that. We just want to know, does it work and do what I need it to do? And does it do it easily? And P.S., if I have a problem, can I find someone to help? Yeah. And... We've really tried, both of us have tried to apply that, that, that business making decision. We've tried to apply that uh, to the enterprise space. And it has been an uphill battle. It really has. Um, but, uh, you know, we definitely share uh, some commonality there in our approaches. Okay, yeah. we've got a bunch of questions coming in, so I'm going to try to bring in a few before. Um, and yeah. then I'd like, Kevin, for you to do a demo if you sure. don't mind, and show us the integration. But um, this, all this romantic talk is TalentQuest um, 
and and tell them are the two of y'all planning to merge? Um, if Talent Quest came to me and offered a billion dollars, possibly yes. <laughs> uh, if 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 I could go buy my own Bahamian island, and I'm sure Kevin would say the same, uh, I, I would entertain that. Uh, but no, I mean it's. I, I honestly, and Kevin, you know, chime in here. Yeah. I think we are more powerful as partners than we are as a combined company. And I'll, I'll say for two reasons. One, it allows us to maintain our autonomy as it relates to the development of the software. Um, in other words, you answer to your question, to your clients and their request. I answer to my clients and their requests. And we collectively can answer uh, to our shared clients. But secondarily, um, and, and this came up, this is something that I actually had not considered as a, as a value. Um, Kevin and I were on a demo with the company and the lady uh, with whom we were demoing said, hey look, if I go with your combined solutions, I want two POs. Remember that? Yeah. I want two POs because I'm with a company right now that bought a learning management system company and I hate their LMS, but I'm on one PO, So, and, but I like their talent suite. So. If I, if I break the contract, I lose my talent and my LMS suite. I want two POs so that if, if for whatever reason there's a regime change or for whatever reason I decide to move LMSs or, or move talent, I have that flexibility. Um, and if we were a combined company, obviously we would lose that flexibility. Uh, yeah, I think to add in, into that uh, question and to expand upon what uh, Matt said is, um, well, really what we've done here is, is I think, is going to allow and provide for the best of both worlds. Um, you know, uh, again, at the heart of everything we do is our clients and what's going to work best for them. And so we try to put outstanding products and services out there. Um, and, you know, so what, we, what we've done here is, is it's more than a partnership. This is a, really a joint venture that we put in place. And I, I may be getting ahead of ourselves here, Dallas, but... Uh, you know, one of the, the, the things that we've really tried to focus in on through that is, is as we co-developed the, the integration in the, uh, of these products is to make it as seamless uh, as possible for the end user. And, you know, so I think you're really getting the best of both worlds yeah. um, in that. And you're getting great products, you're getting great service. And, and again, on top of all that, which we uh, are going to continue to emphasize is, is really outstanding service that you deserve and um, that's not being provided elsewhere. Okay, so um, there's two kind of technical questions that I thought you might be able to address in a demo, um, which I think you're about to go into, Kevin. Um, first is, are you implying that the employee profile is really the foundational part of an integrated talent management system? Um, and so maybe you could address that um, during your demo, and then um, maybe I'll... After you show us a little bit of it, I'll bring you the other questions because sure. there's a few more streaming in. So maybe give us a start, and then um, I'll keep um, chiming in with a few more questions. Perfect. Um, okay, well, I'll keep this pretty high level um, in the interest of time. But what I thought I would do is jump into a, a demo environment here. Um, one of the things, this is Verum Analytics is a, is a demo company that we use quite often to, to showcase some things. Um, and you know have the ability i think one of the nice things about the, the software itself is we talk about flexibility we talk about configurability but that even extends to the to the branding elements and so we can actually brand um, the the application to have your look and feel um, as we've done here to this this fake demo company but i'm going to log in and, and let me describe a little bit of what you're seeing um, as uh, as i've logged in here the system's built around role-based security so we can control who has access, access to the system and and really what level of access they have as well. Uh, and the first thing a user is going to see when they log in is, is their task dashboard. Now this example, we've got a number of tasks um, that are active here just to showcase different capabilities. Um, but uh, again, this is going to tell you what you need to do, when you need to do it, and when you need to do it by. Uh, now we've also got automated uh, email notifications. So as you have a new task that's um, delivered via the system, it's going to automatically notify you via email. And then as you approach a due date or go past a due date, um, you're going to get automated reminders as well. So um, you're being kept up to date uh, with what you need to do uh, through email as well. Um, a couple of other things uh, that I'll touch on as well across the top here is really a, an interactive toolbar uh, where we have um, access to a profile, which is part of your question, Dallas, and I'm going to get to 
a quick link to uh, the team. Um, there's a performance journal built in here to document every day um, related performance activities for not only yourself, but for any of your team members, if you're a manager. Um, and then a site-wide search capability to really quickly pull up information. Um, but let me highlight a couple of things in here when we talk about the integration um, and how we've done this. You'll notice down here in the, in the task dashboard, one of the tasks I have is um, to uh, complete some current enrollments. So what we see here are, are again, two enrollments that uh, Carmen has. One is um, some admin training video uh, related to the software itself. Um, within one click, I can actually launch that particular uh, course. Um, I can see what it is and you know open up the video to then begin playing um, that particular uh, course. Um, so again, very easy to, to get into and um, to launch that particular uh, enrollment. Now, another type of uh, learning course in here is there's one around improving negotiation skills. Um, in this particular example, we've embedded a, um, an assessment at the end of it um, and very easy to very quickly come through um, and complete the assessment. And this is all commonplace if, if you've seen in different types of um, learning courses. But what I want to emphasize is after we've done that, um, first of all, when I come back, I can refresh uh, my enrollment list. And because I've completed that particular course, uh, it, it now disappears from my, my task uh, dashboard. Um, and what I want to show is when, as I, if everybody will recall, when I talked earlier about once you've completed learning, how does that then update your profile? So let's take a look at that employee profile. And this will get at the question as well. Um, and, and so, the question was, is the employee profile a foundational piece um, of a talent management system? And, and I would say um, it is a foundational piece. Is it the foundation? Um, that's, a, that's a debatable question, but I think it's a, it's a key part because it's a place where uh, employees can go to um, not only um, really document and share what their, their top skills are and, but, and see their past work history, um, but really see so much more. So what we see here is, um, in this case, Carmen can see her hire date, who her manager is. All this is information that typically gets pulled in through integration with an HR system, you know, your HRIS system. But from here also, Carmen uh, has the ability through self-service to update her profile to really communicate her desired position within the organization and her willingness to relocate and her willingness to travel. Um, if, uh, if it's easier and she wants to import her LinkedIn profile, we do have an integration with LinkedIn to be able to quickly and easily do that. But as you'll see down below, this profile also documents um, both internal and external positions that Carmen has held within uh, Verum. Um, what her top job skills are and language skills, and these job skills can be specific to the organization. Um, academic background, we can track both formal education as well as other education. And this is where I wanted to point out that integration. So we, this is the course we just completed um, in this demo just a second ago, the improving negotiation skills. So when I complete a course in the LMS, it automatically updates the employee profile, um, and it's all there for, for documentation. Now I can also click into this um, completed course to see when it was completed, um, all the details uh, around that. So the last little bits of the, of the profile are two touching on things such as memberships, licenses, and honors. Um, so as you can see, there's a lot of information here that's being pulled in from your HRIS system. Um, information is being fed in here um, from other modules. So as we see this past results area, uh, Carmen can see um, her most uh, recent performance appraisal. Um, but there's also a self-service component to this particular profile to allow the employee to really share what are their career interests. You know, what is their desired position? Where do they want? What do they want to do next? Um, Etc. Uh, so it's a. I think it is a key part, Dallas, to that to the to the uh, to the overall uh, system itself. I don't want to throw you off at all, uh, but can you speak to? And this was something that that actually surprised me coming in as kind of the uh, you know the neophyte who didn't know very much about talent. Um, I assumed that the only person who would use the talent suite would be kind of managerial and above, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, but you sort of dispelled that, that myth, right? I mean, it, this is something that does and can touch all the way down to the blue collar. Absolutely. I mean, we've got, we've got clients who use it for every employee in the organization. And, um, you know, it's a, uh, 
And the reason is, is again, when you think about the talent management life cycle, there are, there are tools in here when you talk about goal setting and goal alignment in an, an organization. Every employee needs to understand what their goals and expectations are um, for the year and really how do those tie to corporate goals and objectives. So through our goal setting module, you can do that. And that, that applies all the way down to the individual level. Um, we have assessment, an assessment module built into the, to the software as well that really allows on the front end before you hire people to create job profiles um, and identify what specific personality traits and characteristics predict success. Um, and then be able to test a candidate to see um, are they going to be a good fit for the position and the culture. Um, so that's some pre-hire stuff. Um, even performance management. Um, mm -hmm. You know, of course, managers need to be communicating on an ongoing basis, not just once a year, but on a very frequent basis about how is somebody doing. So using um, the capabilities with the performance journal and, uh, and the performance management module. Um, there's so many more, you know, the profile allows them to right. communicate. There's, so it, it really does reach all throughout the, you know, the process. Right. And while you're on um, the profile, a question came in about um, whether or not the profile tables and fields have to be the same in the talent management system and the learning management system, and how do you deal with the differences between the two? Yeah, I mean, and uh, that's a can, uh, can be a, a big question and maybe a broad question, but what we've, again, done, I think, which is so nice for um, the client perspective is um, through these co-development efforts, have really tried to, again, uh, seamlessly tie these um, solutions together so that information is flowing back and forth. And, um, and so there may be some slight differences, and, and, but um, what, we've, what we've seen is that um, really there, you, you end up with a central profile that, that uh, really covers all the uh, components um, and pieces that, that may exist um, of what's in the learning and what's in the, in the talent. Because again, it's, it's, let's not think of these as separate um, systems. I mean, should be, it's, this is one through this, and what we've co-developed here is one seamlessly integrated solution um, that is, is really tying together processes that are so related uh, or should be so closely tied together, but um, you know, uh, aren't always tied together. And I think that sort of um, underscores another uh, theme uh, in between our two companies, and that is that uh, because neither of us were funded, we don't have to be a sales-driven organization, yeah. right? So it means that we can focus on the technology and not so much dumping 60% of our revenues into growth. And that doesn't mean we don't want uh, more clients. You know, I mean, this is an opportunity, hopefully, for us to gain some clients. But uh, the, the, I mean, 40% of all monies, not profits, 40% of all monies we generate goes into R&D. And because of the technologies we use and the technologists we employ, it just works. And that's the issue you have in the space when you looked at the, the cobbled together solutions. They're cobbling these solutions together. Now they have debt service, right? They've got uh, venture capitalists that they have to answer to. Some of them are profit. They're going to answer to the street. And the focus is less on hey, let's get the technologies working, and more on, hey, let's make sure that we're really, really good in our sales presentations and our sales slicks look great. We're the exact opposite, and that's why we can take two different databases. I mean, you don't use the same code that we use. You know, you don't have the same database that we have, but it doesn't matter because we're able to tie them together using APIs and, and the like. Yep. So that brings up another question. Um, our talent question and tell them, uh, publicly held or privately held? Yeah, we're, we're both privately held organizations. Um, and and I, as uh, Matt said, we've, we've, each one of us has been profitable since day one. Um, and um, that's, a, that's a lot uh, to say and more than a lot, uh, more than others can say. Um, we have no outside capital. We've, we've funded our own growth and development uh, throughout, uh, you know, the, the years and uh, invest heavily back into the, to the product itself and, uh, you know, again, it's just we're really focused on, both of us are focused on providing uh, and now together through this joint venture and providing um, the best services we can to, to our clients and um, best products um, available out there. Now, I would say, you know, going back to the original slides, um, at the end of each year, if we were to get together and have kind of a debrief of how did the year go, um, 
our point of pride wouldn't be how much we grew, but how much we retained. Yeah. You know? And if we look back and we say, wow, you know, everyone stayed around. You know, that that to me means more than, hey, we grew 20%. You know, now if you can grow 20% and maintain everyone, fantastic. Um, but that really is the point of pride. Are we doing our jobs after the sale? I think that's the that's the main sort of crux of, of what we try and deliver. Yeah. Good questions. Let me let me show a couple other pieces here in the um, in, in the demo here that I think are important and really kind of hit at this integration. So we've talked a little bit about the the, the profile, uh, the employee profile, and one of the pieces that we see here is this past results tab of the the employee profile. So Carmen can see her most recent performance appraisal, and we talked about earlier um, using uh, gap analysis to identify areas for improvement and, and and what we can do there. So as Carmen clicks into um, her most recent appraisal um, can very easily see what the overall rating was, can go through this particular um, report to see um, what her, how, how she did on her goals, how her manager thought she did, any comments, um, you know, what from a competency standpoint, all of those particular activities. But I'm going to scroll down toward the end here, and as you can see, our system uh, provides the ability to identify the strengths that the individual has, you know, based on the ratings that have been provided here. So what competencies are uh, highest rated? That's important. We want to continue to develop our strengths. But also, what are some areas for improvement? So maybe where the manager rated um, Carmen here a little bit, um, eh, not, not, as not as nicely. And so these are some things we need to work on. Well, from that, we then have the ability to really uh, proactively display some coaching tips for the manager and for the employee that specifically address this competency of strategy that, that is an area that was a gap. Um, but as well, again, this is where the learning and the talent uh, tie so t closely together and, and why this integration um, is important is, as you can see here, courses are also mapped to competencies. And in this case, uh, because strategy is an area that needed development, we can automatically display a course from the LMS um, that, to address that. Um, these are hyperlinked, so within one click um, here, Carmen can be into actually taken to this particular course, so we can see what it is, and she can actually enroll um, in this particular course. So now she's enrolled in it, and again, that's that targeted um, learning based on you know the the gaps that have been identified either in the current role, or this can also be applied as we think about where does this employee want to go and understand the gap analysis from that perspective. And so, these are two separate systems. So you were in uh, the the TM, click the link, and we're automatically taken to the correct page inside the learning management system. Yeah, seamless. You wouldn't know if I didn't tell you. Yeah, and to further you know further reiterate that is um, you know even even within um, our little flyout menu um, here, ours is a very task driven system, so you don't need to uh, really have a heavy menu. But we have embedded um, even the the, the learning. Um, activities embedded in here. So quick link, so if an admin, in this case Carmen is an administrator as well, needs to get to the learning dashboard, again, one click and we're, we're into the learning dashboard. So it has been seamlessly integrated. Um, you know, it's going to be a, a real nice um, experience for the end user. So. And Several questions, I know. <laughs> and to just keep going, I think, um, Kevin, you showed um, the performance review and then linked to, um, you know, a gap analysis there, but um, how do you use the personality assessments for gap identification and future development? And how far, um, this is a question that came in, how far does the organization go or need to go to get an ROI with this? Yeah, so let me let me tackle the first one uh, first uh, when we talk about the, uh, the personality assessments. And, you know, it, it's, it's a when we're looking at employees, obviously uh, competencies are a critical thing to look at and understand. You know, where what what proficiency levels does an individual have relative to the competencies that are required uh, for success in that job, and that's going to tell you a lot about the individual um, and their beha their behavior and their performance. Where the personality assessments can play such a critical role as well is is really helping understand more about the individual and what makes them tick. Um, and maybe answering some of the whys, why they may be, might be behaving a certain way uh, and performing and doing things a certain way. And really, we, um, as you saw, we can tie um, automatic developmental recommendations to 
um, the gap analysis from a performance review. We can also do that uh, with a 360, but we also do it with a, through the personality assessments as well and can provide targeted learning based on uh, personality traits and character characteristics as well. So it, it ties nicely there. Um, how far does it need to go in the organization to you know, get an ROI? Um, I don't think there's a simple answer to that, and I don't think there, it's a, um, a single answer to it. I think it depends on the organization. I think it depends on what they're currently doing today, um, you know, where their pain points are, uh, and I think in, in some organizations they may start with a, a you know, specific level of the organization in certain activities um, based on where they are in their business and their business cycle. Uh, other, other cases, it may be that we're going to you know, start with um, the entire organization uh, for a particular module and maybe slowly roll some of these things out. So a big part of, um, of doing and rolling out a talent management solution is really to understand how, how do we want to handle that rollout and how do we want to handle the change management process that goes, goes around with it. And this is another area where I think there's um, a shortfall uh, out there in the market is, is really um, providers not doing as good a job as they could or should in um, working with their clients as they roll out solutions to think through and ask the tough questions of why are you doing things the way you are? Um, are you doing it that way because um, you want to and there's a certain end result you're trying to get or are you doing it that way because uh, it, it, there was no technology before and paper and pencil forced you to? Um, and, um, and really helping them think through what are their objectives and, um, and, and again, then configuring the solutions accordingly and, and helping them roll that out to communicate what's going to be coming um, to all of their employees and how this is going to benefit their employees and not just the organization. I, that, I'm so glad you brought that up because that is one of the aspects of the relationship that, that I feel, uh, along, okay, I think there are, two th there are three things that kind of differentiate what we're doing, okay? First, and these aren't necessarily in order of importance, but first is we're going to support the heck out of our clients. If you need something, we're going to be there, all right? Um, secondly, the integration PS actually works. It's not, it's not one of these things where we say it works and it doesn't work. It works. It's very, very solid. Um, third, and this is where I think you guys as a company distance yourselves, um, outside of the software, you have incredible consulting capacity. Mm -hmm. So we're not just saying, here's a piece of software, have at it. We're actually saying, well, wait a minute, let's look at this holistically. Can we come in and affect change on the people level and then leverage the software to support that change? And I think that's one of the things that, you know, you guys with, um, you know, all, all your uh, experience can really help folks, um, not just with the implementation of the software, but really affecting change. At the at the boots on the ground level. Yeah, well, that's a good point. You owe me twenty dollars for that point. <laughs> <laughs> that's, um, does that sort of? Yeah, I think that's that. I mean, again, I, we we could spend hours going through something, but I know we wanted to touch on a couple of the ways in which um, you know we've integrated um, the learning into the rest of the talent management suite. And what I'm hope I hope people have seen, and and we're more than happy to follow up and and do this in more detail yeah. with anyone. But um, is that they really are seamlessly integrated? I mean. Um, and, you know, they should be, you know, talent is going to feed uh, and uh, learning and learning is going to feed um, talent management activity. So it's a it's a great end to end solution. Uh, just real quick. And this is the total sidebar. But there was a question. Um, can we integrate with third party systems like Lawson? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And we can either drive the data through talent quest to uh, exceed or vice versa. Um, and it's we can either leverage an API in real time. Typically. Loss and people solve type feeds. Those are going to um, those are going to come to us probably on a nightly basis using a CSV file, either FTP or FTP over SSL. Uh, but the integrations uh, with, I mean, I, I can't think of one that we have not integrated yeah. with. Um, you know, very very simple. We actually don't charge for the integration um, initially, uh, and it takes maybe two phone calls uh, between I, your IT and uh, and us. So. Easy stuff. Um, we have several more questions that are sort of specific and demo related. Um, so maybe we'll just continue on and then come back at, at the end to see if. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd say, you know, we have it scheduled for an hour. Um, I mean, there's so many questions. I see them. Um, you know, 
let's get through as much as we can. Maybe sa- I mean, it's it's ten till. Yeah. Um, maybe save, I don't know, five minutes, and then whomever is on and would still like to talk, uh, just stay on. You know, we're good, uh, and we'll answer questions. But yeah, if you want to get through whatever your sort of core is between now and then, that sounds good to me. Yeah, sounds great. Um. Okay, so uh, you might have already addressed this, Matt, but um, I was going to ask you, why would, if I was shopping for um, a talent or learning management system, why would I go with two best of breed providers versus one of the big dogs that, right. you know, one name that has both? Right. Um, I have to be politically correct here because I have my own personal thoughts as to why. Uh, and I, I need to keep it professional. Um, I would say, generally speaking, the all-in-one solutions are not all-in-one solutions. They are three, four, six solutions that a big boy has gone and purchased and jerry-rigged together. Okay. When they purchased the company, let's say, I'm not going to use names, but let's say the talent company purchased the LMS company. The talent company then jettisoned all of the technical people and all of the support people from the LMS company. So while you may be getting an LMS and a talent suite, you are not getting the support team nor the dev team that built that LMS. Okay, so one, and we keep coming back to support, and it's the least sexy thing, and you don't know that our support's good until you actually experience it, but that is a major reason. You know, support, support, support. Uh, the second, which I referenced um, earlier, is our integration is better, and this is per Brandon Hall and Burson. Our integration is better than anything out there. It's more seamless, and it's deeper, and it's more uh, meaningful than anything else in the space. They can say they have better integrations. It's absolutely not true. The way that we've done it is based on technology and not, you know, shoestrings and duct tape, right? Um, the third, and, and again, I don't want to focus on this, but the question about the ROI, we're actually affordable. I mean, you, there's actually an affordable solution that's really robust and that will be supported. And our whole focus is understanding what's the value, what's our ROI, and we price it accordingly. Got it. Sounds great. Um, we had a poll question, but I say we skip it because we have so many other questions. Perfect. Sure. Um, so if it's okay, I'll just start rolling with those. Mm-hmm. Um, be, I think we were going to go into our retention rate, but we have the. I think we've hit on that. We've enough. hit on that, and <laughs> we retain a lot. It's ironic though how both of you um, maintain the same number, which is kind of cool. The ninety-eight percent. It's hilarious. Um, couldn't have planned that. Yep. Okay, so here is a question. How does this system link to measures of organizational performance, um, like revenues, margins, volumes, et cetera? Yeah, I mean, I think that's all in, in, in really um, how you want to, t- typically in, the, in a talent system, it's, it's using a, um, a goal capability. And through our goal module, we have the ability to do that. You have the, uh, really can set corporate goals and objectives. Um, those can be financial related goals and ob- objectives. They can be, um, Production related, they can be service related. Um, doesn't matter what those those are, and then those can then be cascaded down throughout the organization to um, you know business unit levels, to department levels, and then ultimately to the individual, so that um, each employee in the organization knows what it is they need to do and are being asked to do. But um, more importantly, that they and the and their manager know when they're setting those goals and expectations for the individual that if they can't be aligned and map to a higher level goal, then it's really not a good goal. So the system can really support um, goal alignment. Um, and then the beauty of it is um, that through the reporting capabilities in there is uh, the CEO, the CFO, COO, whomever that may be, uh, can run reports in real time throughout the course of the year around those corporate goals and objectives to see how are we doing? Because employees throughout the year update their progress towards completion of those and there's a roll up. So they can see are we ahead of schedule on a corporate goal, or are we on track, or are we behind schedule, and, and really dig into the details. So there's lots of visibility to tie um, back to those uh, financial related goals. Okay, so um, 
now if we could talk about competencies. How would competencies be treated in a large enterprise with many lines of business and different kinds of job competencies? And then um, what do you have to do to map training to these targeted competencies? Yeah, so uh, it's kind of a big question. It is a big question, and, and um, really one that it, again, there's going to be different things. But from a, this is Matt referenced. Uh, thank you, Matt, earlier the consulting capabilities that we have, and and we have uh, about twelve PhD level psychologists and um, a couple former CEOs on staff where we do a lots of consulting and one around talent management um, and leadership development. One of those areas is is competency development. In Dallas, what we typically see is really to try to create a competency framework for an organization um, that will really um, provide distinction, maybe um, in the behaviors associated with a particular competency. Uh, so there's some distinction and differentiation at the different uh, job family level as well as functional level. Um, so that again, one of the things you want to keep in mind with competency is to make sure that they're always relevant um, to the you know, to the positions and to the individuals in those roles. And you can do that through a, a really developing a good competency framework and then uh, ensuring that those get pushed out um, to the people in those particular roles. And then how do you map Yeah, the so the training? second part of that is, well, and that's where, you know, um, again, through the, um, the the consultants that we have and, and, and or even with the working with the folks in, internally is can take, um, and we've done some of this, is, is really take the learning activities um, and, and developmental resources, the e-learning content, and, and really understand which competencies do those apply to. And so um, there is a process of, of actually um, understanding what are the learning components and courses that an organization is using, because that's different from organization to yep. organization, as Matt knows better than, than, than I do. But um, once we understand what learning courses are being used, we then, um, again, map those to the competencies um, through our system, and uh, then they're automatically attached. I think you, know, you mentioned it, but just from my perspective, the ability to come in and partner with the organization to build the right mix, I think, is something that um, gets overlooked. I mean, you've just given this piece of software, and, and you know, ha-ho, have fun, right? Now, I mean, it's not that. It's let's look at it and leverage the software to buttress what we do on the consulting side. Yeah. Okay, so this this question goes back to the support, which um, we have talked a lot about, um, and it's a good question. So, can Intellum provide technical support for TalentQuest and vice versa, or is support assigned to a different company based on the question or issue? That's a really good question, and that, you know, I would say that's that was one of the two major questions that we him and hauled over both of us as companies at the very beginning. You know, one was, uh, you know, how do we handle support, and the second was, what the heck do we call this relationship? Right? Is it a partnership, joint venture, you know, friendship? You know, who knows? Um, on the support side, uh, you can run either through Talent Quest support or Intelm support. What our folks are trained to do is triage. Who or you know, where the issue may lay or lie, uh, and then via sort of a traffic cop say, okay, I understand the issue. Here is the individual that I am going to uh, to attach this Zendesk um, uh, ticket to, and then whether it's a SCORM tracking issue on on the Intellum side or some competency mappings on the Talent Quest side, we're going to route you. And Kevin's team does the same to us we will route you uh, to the appropriate uh, respondent. But yeah. you keep your same contact in terms of your support, you, your client manager who, Whoever, the same. exactly. You have, we both, and this is another common thing with us, which is crazy, both companies have a dedicated support mail. It's a person with a name, an email address, a cell phone, a picture. Yeah, I, I mean, that's, the, that's what I wanted to emphasize is, you know, that, that you, you will have all of our clients will have a dedicated support person uh, that will that you will work with initially and and uh, with for any question no matter what um, you know we kind of look at this as learn you know in our in our view learning is just another module within our talent management suite yeah um, whether it's um, no different than having six, our succession module and our performance management module um, 
and, you know, our, our 360 module or a learning module. It's another module, and we're going to support it the way we do all of our modules. Yeah. So it's all through that dedicated support uh, right. contact. Right. And that, you know, going back to my point, that is a difference in comparison to others in the space. Yeah. You know, others in the space have, yes, they've purchased an LMS, but then they lost all their support people. Yeah. So uh, we did not want that to happen, obviously. Um, we want to maintain... Um, you know, the same level of support regardless. Well, and have people that, that that model makes sense and that you have an individual that works with you from the very beginning that gets to know your culture, your company, um, how the systems have been, uh, your business processes, yeah. how, how the system's been configured to support that. And when you have a question, uh, you're dealing with that person who already knows, you know, how the system's been configured for you and the nuances. Yeah, that's um, a great point. So it's a resolution comes very quick. Yep. Well, great. I think um, the rest of the questions are pretty specific, and I might just follow up yeah, with and you to get individual answers. That sounds email. good. And um, Martin, uh, thank you for attending. Um, as usual, you're the most active. I love all your questions. Um, I'll follow up with you via an email, um, and if you want, I can introduce you to Kevin as well. Um, but the, uh, the questions I see here, yeah, are probably pretty specific. Um, so, yeah, well, so, yeah, thanks for everybody for, for attending. Um, I hope it was a uh, meaningful um, session for you this afternoon. There were lots of really good questions. I, uh, we had a lot of engagement, which is nice. And, you know, as Matt said, and as Dallas, I'm sure we'll wrap up, um, you know, we'd, we'd be more than happy to follow up individually with folks to uh, dig into more detail um, and answer more questions. So yeah. thank you for your time. Yes, and um, if there, if you think of any questions after we close out today, feel free to email me at um, info at talentquest.com, and I will make sure to get the questions to either Matt or Kevin or both, and um, look for an email from us for everyone who registered today. We will be sending you a recording as well as the slides um, from today's presentation before the end of the week. Well, and, and one last thing. If anyone wants to get into the Intellum Think Tank, um, I have prospects and clients that are in our social tool, um, then including the AO Wireless folks that I referenced before. Um, it's a really neat place to share ideas, um, as well as to comment on some of the development that we have coming up. So uh, we'll include that in the email as well, just the link to Tribe. Okay, and so Think Tank is a part of Tribe? Tribe, yep. Okay, yep. all right, so we will send that um, information out to all of you and thank you so much and um, we hope to see you again on one of our future webinars. Bye guys. Bye. Bye.